It was 1993. The mighty West Indies were in Australia and the stage was set for one of the most epic encounters in cricket history. But oh, how the tables had turned. Once invincible, the West Indies were no longer the towering giants of world cricket. Injuries, retirements and inconsistency had turned their reign shaky. Australia on the other hand had begun to establish themselves as the new kings of cricket. This wasn't the West Indies of the 80s. This was a team trying to keep their legacy alive. While the Australians, well, they just wanted to make them history. But one man wasn't ready to let that happen. Kirtley Ambrose. On January 30th, 1993 in Perth, he unleashed a spell that sent Australia spiralling into cricketing infamy. The rivalry between Australia and the West Indies was among cricket's fiercest. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, Australia stepped onto the field as the favourites. Think of it like a Hollywood blockbuster. The old kings versus the ambitious challengers. But the West Indies weren't just going to hand over the crown. No, no, not without a fight. The series was logged at 1-1. The West Indies had clawed back with a hard-stopping one-run victory in the fourth test. Yes. One run. If you thought your favourite TV drama had suspense, you have clearly never watched this match. Now, in Perth, both teams were desperate for a win. The stage was intense, the atmosphere tense. And to make matters worse for the West Indies, two of the big guns, Benjamin and Carl Hooper, were out with injuries. The Australians were probably grinning ear to ear thinking, this will be easy. But little did they know, that a storm named Kirtley Ambrose was about to unfold. We went to Perth and looked at the pitch and it looked ripe for fast bowling. Ambrose made a bold prediction to his captain Richie Richardson. If we win the toss, we win this match and the series. West Indies lost the toss, but what happened next surprised everyone. Alan Border won the toss and decided to bat. Ambrose's reaction? Confusion. It was as if Border had just handed over a Christmas gift in January. But even great bowlers have bad starts. Ambrose's first spell was a mess. Too short, too wide. It wasn't clicking. By lunch, Australia was cruising at 85 for 2. And Ambrose sat silently, blaming himself. But after lunch, something changed. And which came to me and asked me, you know, big fella, how are you feeling? I said, I'm ready to bowl. And with that, Ambrose adjusted his length, just a fraction fuller, and what followed was destruction. Mark Waugh was the first victim. A good length ball kissed the outside edge, straight to the keeper. Ambrose had found his rhythm. Next came David Boone, Australia's most solid batsman. He was set on 44, but Ambrose produced a brutal ball that climbed from a good length, and the edge flew to slip, where Richie Richardson died forward to complete the catch. Boone was out. But the Aussies weren't worried, until Ireland Border walked out. Border had faced countless bowlers in his career, but Ambrose gave him the nastiest welcome. First ball, back of a length, seam movement, edge, gone, Border out for a golden duck. The Australians in complete disarray here. Ian Healy was next. He managed to survive Ambrose's hat-trick ball, but did not last much longer. A thick edge flew to Brian Lara at slip. Australia was now 102 for 6, and Ambrose wasn't done yet. Murph Hughes then decided to play like he was auditioning for a highlight reel. The big fast medium bowler decided to go over the top, and the resulting skyer was well held by Keith Atherton. Ambrose had 5, and Hughes was the only man dismissed by Ambrose that day without edging to the keeper or slip. Two more edges, and Ambrose completed his magical spell. Damien Martin edged another quick delivery outside off stump to second slip. That performance was phenomenal. That was probably one of the best spell of fast we that I'd seen. He was literally on table in Perth. And just four balls later, debutant Joe Angle nicked one to the keeper. At seven for one, he's got another one, what a spell! Seven wickets, just one run conceded. Seven wickets for one run, let that sink in. 32 balls of relentless, World-class fast bowling. Alan Border and his team sitting in the dressing room, collectively thinking, what just happened? This spell 
wasn't just a statement, it was a warning. The West Indies might have looked vulnerable, but with legends like Ambrose in their ranks, they could still destroy the very best. In a space of 32 balls, Ambrose changed the complexion of the match. From 85 for 2, Australia was bowled out for just 119. The West Indies responded with 322 runs, thanks to a strong top order, and the 203 run deficit proved too much for the Australians. By the third day, Ian Bishop tore through the lineup, picking up six wickets, including Alan Border's second duck of the match, the first pair of his career in 138 tests. The match ended in just three days. Australia was humiliated, and the West Indies clinched the series 2 1 after initially being down 0 1. From being 1 0 up to 2 1 down just in the blink of an eye. Ambrose finished the match with 9 wickets and 19 in the back to back test wins, winning the Man of the Series award as well. Ambrose picked up the total of 33 wickets in the series and equaled Clary Grimmett and Alan Davidson's record for the most wickets in a West Indies Australia series. And for the Wagga groundsman, he reportedly lost his job for preparing a pitch trailer made for Ambrose. But honestly, could anyone have stopped him that day? Probably not. I was just. Ambrose. Oh, that was serious. That was. that serious cricket. So, guys, that's it for today's video. But wait, don't go anywhere. If you wish to look at how good was Curtly Ambrose or how Viv Richard shocked the world with his batting, click on the videos being displayed on your screen. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Until next time, keep watching this beautiful game. See you soon.